Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. I hope you had a chance to see me on SB Nation's show where we did March Madness Bracket Breakdown. It was really cool, very informative, and will guarantee to win your bracket. So watch it in the link below or on the screen. And if you want to get into a bracket, our friends at sportsbook.com are doing a $100,000 challenge. So get over there, sign up if you're in the U.S., and you have a chance to win a lot of money. Well, I went through this scintillating Heat versus Celtics game from last night, and the real story was Jeff Green. And he was incredibly hot, made some terrific plays. I don't want to take anything away from him. Of course, we're going to have to show some plays that he made, even though he had the most atrocious footwork you've seen. And every once in a while, he'll have a game where when he jumps off the wrong foot, he'll still make that shot. But it's nothing that's going to be consistent until he fixes his footwork. However, it was fun to watch last night, and it gave the Celtics, who were extremely shorthanded, a chance at beating the Heat. But if you can't go all the way against them, they're going to take the game away from you cruelly. Jeff Green definitely benefited from some interesting defense. Here LeBron helps out on the drive, but then completely loses where he is and gives up an open three. Out of my favorite set, Horns, here comes Jeff Green on the high post and that turns into a ball screen for him. Look at the confidence he has now to isolate on Birdman on the switch, blows right by him with a beautiful layup. Here is something I rarely see from him, getting a tough rebound in traffic and then going coast to coast. However, it wouldn't be a Jeff Green move unless he jumped off the wrong foot. Right foot jump, right foot layup, but it goes in. If Shane Battier is guarding you, chances are you're going to have some open looks because he does help out so much. Here he's going to help out on the roll man like he's supposed to, but then Chris Bosch is supposed to help him by running over there to get there. Way too late even though it's a miss. The Celtics take advantage of all the help that Miami gives on the screen and roll by swinging it before they actually do the screen and roll. Watch how Jeff Green attacks Birdman, again off the right foot with the right hand finish. It's backwards. Like we said before, Battier is a supreme helper and if he's guarding you, you're going to be open a bit. Here he takes a nice charge, but no call and Jeff Green starts heating up on that late rotation by Birdman. More sky high confidence on the miss, he gets the rebound coast to coast, but again, this is an even worse example where he goes off the right foot, out of control, but somehow makes it. He does have good footwork sometimes, here's a nice in rhythm off both feet, strong to the hoop. We did catch him playing some pretty bad D on LeBron on this play. He doesn't even know where he is. Backdoor layup. More benefiting from being guarded by Badier's over helping. Here he's going to get stuck down too low below Wilcox. He should be running on the high side so he can stop the pass to Wilcox, but still get around to close out on that screen. Gorgeous inverse flex action where they back screen and then they screen for Jason Terry. This causes confusion and both Dwayne Wade and Ray Allen will rotate to the same place, leaving Jeff Green open. The wheels start to fall off on this Jeff Green post up. When he gets the ball off the backboard first, it should be a goaltending call because any ball touched after it hits the backboard, whether it's going up or down, is a goaltend. The refs blow it. And here's a crucial play. In transition, the Celtics have a strange lineup with Terry, Bradley, Jeff Green, Paul Pierce, and Bass at center. In the previous possession, you had Paul Pierce guarding Mario Chalmers, but instead in transition, he needs to pick up LeBron James, which means that Jeff Green's got to pick up his man, Mario Chalmers. This does not happen in one bit. They get confused. Bass had a last shot to do it. It doesn't get there, and they hit a three. The Celtics run a pin down for Pierce, and LeBron James needlessly gambles for a steal on the pass, forcing everyone to rotate. Look at that great cut to bring Chalmers over and open up a three for Bradley. Jeff Green continues his heroic game by pushing LeBron James farther out than he wants to be and then putting enough pressure at the rim to stop the shot from going in. Green negates that good defense by going toward Chalmers in the corner, leaving LeBron wide open for a layup attempt that he puts back in. Bad. Another one of my favorite offensive plays where they pin down in the corner and then dribble pitch to Pierce coming out of there. They get some nice movement and here comes Jeff Green attacking, but he doesn't pull up and hit a nice jumper, instead a difficult shot that misses. After getting another stop, they spread the floor and run a simple pick and roll and that opens up a big lane for Brandon Bass to penetrate. If you want to beat the Heat, you're going to have to make layups like this. For the win, LeBron knows they're not going to give him a call if he goes to the hoop, so he's going to operate from outside and take his chances and this, my friends, is a dagger. 
The Celtics wisely do go for two with their hottest player, Jeff Green, but it does take an incredible defensive effort by Shane Battier to get that ball out of his hands and not get a shot attempt. Here, curiously, they go for the win on a three that was a very tough shot when they could have gotten closer and maybe a better chance at tying the game. So there you have it, sports fans. You need to be able to play for 48 minutes against the Heat if you want to beat them. Not 47, not 47, 33. You have to go the whole way, get some breaks from the refs. Now that one goaltending was that really hurt the Celtics was when uh, Jeff Green shot and hit the backboard. Uh, and if they got mad, it would have changed the, uh, the whole game around. So that kind of stuff happens, but you can't miss the layup that Bass missed. And uh, those things are crucial. Well, don't forget our friends at Sportsbook are running this little bracket thing where you can win $100,000 if you pick enough of those winners. It's not the hugest thing in the world like ESPN. There's not 2 million people registering, so you do have a good shot at doing it. So get over there, register, and win. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for lots more coming up because don't forget, at B-Ball Breakdown, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You win.